Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. A year has passed since I first made my knife collection video. That was July 2019 and we are now in July 2020. In fact, it is the end of July 2020. My goodness, how quickly time has passed. I did some reflection on my previous video and I realized that there was a lot of banter in that. So I'm going to be cutting that down. I actually created two versions of the video. One is the full version and the other is the shortcut or the quick cut version and I don't think I'll be doing that for this video because I've decided to cut back on the banter and just showcase the knives. My collection did not grow too much hopefully. Uh, I don't think that I've bought a lot of knives in the past year but I did sell quite a few so you know give and take I have I think a bit more than what I used to have. If you see a knife that you are interested in just hit me up I might be letting it go. Now with all of that out of the way I will start this off by showing you guys the loose knives that I have. Loose meaning that they are actually around either in like my EDC case or on the side where it's easy for me to reach and they are not in storage. So yeah let's just get that started. First of all it's ACRKT Fulcrum 2. This one I don't think I showcased in the previous video and I don't know why I didn't show it but this is actually one of the first few knives that I bought. This is quite a lousy knife I gotta say. I mean the action is interesting like look at that this is that's how it operates but I got it because I was you know just starting out in the whole knife world and I was interested in this kind of um different mechanism. The next one I have lying around is the Kaiser Feist. You guys have seen this one. I've made a video about it. I've recently sharpened it but I don't think I did a good job. I'm thinking of getting myself one of those KME uh, knife sharpeners so I could get a nice proper even grind on it. Designed by Justin Lundquist. Manufactured by Kaiser. This is the Blade HQ exclusive carbon fiber scales reverse tanto version with the speed holes here. The next loose knife is my Para 3 Lightweight. This one is also on my EDC rotation. That is why it's loose. I've also given the scales a red dye drop from purple to red. And I've also did some modifications to the scales. So now this thing has washers on both sides. Yeah, I cut off the plastic washer on the scale. And apart from that, there isn't really much else to talk about. Good lightweight carry, very comfortable in hand. Para 3 Lightweight. Ah, the next one. This is still in my collection, guys. I I kind of want to sell it because here in Singapore, it's not easy to come across or come into contact with assisted openers. But you guys know this is the first knife I purchased for myself. So yeah, uh, <laughs> still a cool looking knife, albeit a little bit uh, <laughs> different from what I usually enjoy nowadays. This is completely different from the taste that I've developed over the years. The Shred SEHA 3CB Magic Knife. Ah, next on the rotation. This is something that you guys have not yet seen on my channel. It is the QSP Penguin. This is, in my opinion, the best under 30 US dollars knife that you can buy. You've got D2 steel, you've got dual luck thumb studs and you guys just saw the action. Stay tuned for a video review on this thing because this really deserves a video on its own. Now I don't know why I still have this knife. This is the Kershaw Shuffle 2 Tanto and I, I really don't know why I still have this. This is truly... <laughs> In my opinion, this is quite a crap knife. <laughs> you know, since I have it, it's going into the collection video. Now we have the CRKT Provoke. You guys know that I have this knife and you guys know that I like it. I recently purchased this Kydex sheath and this is actually also manufactured by CRKT. Mine's still the first version. And uh, yeah, it works perfectly fine. I think you guys know that I stonewashed the arms and everything of the knife, except for the blade. I didn't stonewash the blade. I have to admit that I almost never use it anymore. Really, I think the novelty has worn off. But the thing is, I recently found out that karambits are actually considered weapons here in Singapore. So while there are no laws to prevent you from actually importing these or purchasing these, you're not allowed to carry it out. So thank goodness I haven't carried it out yet. It's always been in my room and it shall stay there unless someone wants to buy it off me. But yep, CRKT Provoke everyone. This is the first generation. The most sentimental knife in my collection. This is my first folding pocket knife given to me by my buddy Kenji. I've lost the pocket clip. To be honest with you, I didn't lose it. I threw it away because the pocket clip just became completely rusty. Cold steel, tie light. There we go. Uh, I'm still not confident in flicking it open because I did not practice it. But I have to say that the action is much better now. Uh, I think because I've replaced the lube with KPL. It's still running on Teflon washers by the way. But yeah, it is rather smooth. Yeah, you guys already know about this one. So it's still in my collection because it's just too sentimental for me to let go. Oh, look what I have here. This is a pocket EDC organizer. This is by Tactical Tukang from Malaysia. But yeah, I won't be talking about this organizer in this video because it deserves a video of its own. But I'm talking about this knife here. This is actually on my EDC right now. This is actually my carry right now. This is the Damn Designs Oni. This one is the carbon fiber version, but I've done a blade swap and this one is 
featuring D2. This is on my carry because it's a pretty awesome knife to have in hand. It's pretty chunky to hold and feel in hand even though it is smaller in terms of its overall size but it's an awesome knife and I just uh, screwed up on snapping it open. Let me do that and redeem myself. There we go. Damn designs only everyone. This is the first of the few that I have to show you guys in my collection but yes I cannot ignore that this is in my collection as well. We are done with all the loose knives that I have lying around. Now let's talk about the fixed blades that I have and that's really quick because I only have two fixed blades. This is the RIP Knives Tactical Karambit Cleaver, the TKC. I love it, man. Oh yeah, it's got a bit of ballistol on it. Like I purposely put a lot of ballistol because I didn't want it to rust in storage. This is actually sitting next to my survival bag. But yeah, it's uh, still with me. A really, really good knife. And I'm really, really glad that I got one of these because I don't think that Danny Yard is making any more of these. Looking at his Instagram, he's into chef knives and stuff, but no longer into this particular style. So I'm really happy and a really proud owner of one of these. And the next fixed blade is this Keba, Kaba, Keba. Keba Becker BK2 and it's got a different sheath now. I've actually changed it out from the FRN sheath or the GRN sheath or whatever it was into this nylon sheath because I've read online that everyone says that this is a better sheath to have. This one actually sits inside of the survival bag and it has not seen any use because uh, thank goodness I don't have to put my survival bag to use. Yep, it's an emergency survival bag, you know, but this is something that I know I can trust. Yeah, right now I don't have any need for any new or any more fixed blades. Maybe the Gerber one's quite cool maybe the fox knives are okay you know what i gotta stop poisoning myself so yeah i'll st i'll stick to these two for now this kind of classifies as a pocket knife this is the gerber prybrid utility and you can see that the tip has been chipped off yeah i've been using this quite a bit and i chipped the tip and i really hate that <laughs> i think i've swapped it around before yes guys i've swapped it around before so the other tip has also chipped i put this to quite some hard use you know like i've been like cutting stuff on cardboard and wood and i think that because i actually tried to cut plastic then it broke. If you're wondering why the scales look so different from others, it's because I got the grey version, then I rip dyed it green, and then I sanded the flats, and so you kind of have this interesting pattern here, like that. It's actually quite large, and I don't find it very comfortable to put in the pocket. I will never get sick of this. This is the Griego Knives Cleaver Insert for the Kiba. You guys have seen this a bunch of times. I will not waste your time talking about this any further but I still have it and it's still awesome. Now here's a knife that was frequently on my EDC. This is my mini Griptilian, the custom one that I got from Benchmade's custom uh, whatever thing on their website. I've red dyed the scales, I've given it purple, going up to the original pink and I think it looks quite radical this way. It looks pretty darn awesome, but this is still the same old, good old Benchmade mini Griptilian. And the next one is a gift from Mr. William Lee. This is the CRKT Ruger Knives LCK. One of the better value for money budget EDC folders. This was under 40 US dollars. It's a really good competitor to the QSP Penguin that I mentioned just now, provided you can find yourself one of these. Action on this is actually pretty darn solid. I have cut myself with this a couple of times and one of the times I actually did it while recording the video you guys saw I actually cut myself twice here and it started bleeding pretty profusely. Now we are moving into the mini SAK realm. So I've got a few mini SAKs. This one is and I think this is called an SD classic. I mean I'm really bad with my SAK models guys but this one has been with me for I have no idea how long. At least I think 10 years or more and I've removed the tweezer and replaced it with a firefly attachment. So you've got a little knife attachment here we've got a, a nail file and whatever this is this this thing is because some of them have that squarish tip i'll show you in a while a pair of scissors and i really love these scissors here and on the other side we have a pair of tweezers the tweezers are possibly one of the most important things like in a small little mini multi-tool like that next is the exact same knife but this one is a blade hq exclusive with the knife life hashtag on it and on the flip side it is knives with the blade hq logo and i think this looks absolutely awesome but it's got so many scratches now it's got exactly the same tools as what you have on the purple version but i mentioned earlier that this guy actually has a nail file thing so this is that funny tool right but it is a pointed edge versus this one over here where it is known as a flathead screwdriver. Well, you can see that it is ground in such a way that it's meant to be used also as possibly a pry bar, but I don't know what this one is like. Yeah, and also the grit here in the file area is of a lower grit than this. This one seems to be of a higher grit. It seems to be finer. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference or the discrepancies actually are. I always thought that they were the same, you know, and everything on it, like all the tools, 
feature in that would be made exactly the same, but I guess I'm wrong. Next up, of course, is the Spider Nox Rambler. You guys know I made the video on this. This was actually a custom made by Sean Dooley. I'll put his Instagram handle on screen so that you guys can go check it out. But yeah, it's got the Spider Co blade attachment here, screwdriver, and bottle opener tool here. It's got the pair of scissors here. It has the standard SAK blade. And it also has the flathead screwdriver tool. I'm laughing because, you know, the tweezers in it. Titanium scales on either side. Red D10 liners, which look beautiful. Got a cross that was cut out slots for two trits in here. Beautiful piece by Sean Dooley. But what you guys have not yet seen is the second one that I got also from Sean Dooley. It's still titanium scales, but I've got three fuller cuts done here. So really awesome looking cuts here. Then I've gone for different colored G10 liners. So I've got blue on either side and green in the middle, which gives it a very interesting contrast. So you can actually see the blue coming up through this cut out slot here. Red and blue, full red blue and green but yeah apart from that the trick slots are slightly shorter overall and they are slightly closer but you know everything is handmade now i do have to say that on this particular version the spider nox blade or the spider core blade actually sticks up a bit higher so i've actually cut my index finger just by accidentally rubbing it across this way once before so i'm very wary of that i'm not sure how to get it to sit further down even though i think that if i ask sean he'll tell me to just adjust the tension on the screw here but that's not all everyone that's not all i actually have another custom sak this one is also a spider nox rambler but this is not made by sean dooley this is made by tyler schultz and he is known as mini swiss knives on instagram i'll put a link on screen as well to his ig page and i would say that these two are pretty much comparable like they are a bit different but you know you have different price points as well so this one's actually a lot cheaper than the ones that sean makes but the main difference is that tyler isn't able to get scales that are as thin as sean does and he only works in g10 he also doesn't have the machinery to cut out the notches for the uh, extra insert so there's no tweezer or toothpick insert here for this build i went for light gray g10 scales on the outside and orange liners which gives it a really cool look and then i've gone for darkened stone wash finish on all of the tools and then the four screws here the torque screws these are in uh, anodized gold and you can see that the hardware here is gold as well and there's still more everyone i went overboard and i got actually two from tyler natural g10 liners natural g10 scales and for all of the tools and the pocket clip everything is just the original finish i don't even know what finish this is called is this called polish? Because I don't think it's considered polish, right? But it is the original finish. And we've got all the hardware in silver. Guys, this is my small-sized SAK collection, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I went overboard. <sighs> I figured since we are in the realm of smaller size knives, I still have this. This is the Tucson. I forgot the model on this one. It is a slip joint. A very interesting mechanism for a slip joint. You actually see this interfacing with the notches on the blade itself. So that's the halfway point and then the fully open point. So the walk and talk on this is pretty interesting. Nice and authoritative. Of course, I had to show off the Bastion Mini Braza Bro or Braza Bro Mini. I've sold a couple, I've given one away. I've kept two of these and one of the cleavers still in my collection. But yeah, still very good action. This one is also a Tucson knife, actually designed by Sebastian Idawan. One of the cooler looking knives that I have, the cooler looking smaller knife. How did I? There we go. So yeah, I just got to apply the skills that I picked up from using the Feist. There we go. Authoritative snap open. Oh, I forgot that this was made in M390. That's cool. On to something I've not yet shown you guys and you guys have not seen on my channel. This is the Best Tech Knives Tulip. Now, there are a few versions of this knife. This is the ball lock. There is a frame lock version. This one here is kind of like a slip joint, but it's, you know, you can see friction open and friction close. But the reason why I chose it is because of this particular profile over here. Like this actually helps you with opening the knife like that. The other version has a different profile on the top. So that actually assists you in getting a better flipping opening action, I guess. I've worn out this particular screw here. It's completely stripped. Eric Outer over at Outer Limitless is actually sending me a replacement screw. He actually tried to send me one recently, but it got lost in the mail. Like as in the screw actually tore out of the envelope. So yeah, I've got a missing screw and he's actually sending me another replacement one. So shout out to you. Eric Outer of Outer Limitless. Hey, hey, this one you guys have seen before. This is the... Uh, 
there we go. The bean, the the, the fake bean <laughs> by Serge Menchenko. This is actually given to me by my buddy Adrian from Melbourne. Like I said, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even know that this is not the original or this is not an original and it is in fact a clone. But for sentimental reasons, this is still with me. Still in the small size knives range of my collection, this is the Pocket Rhino by Bade Modern Designs. And if it looks different, that's because I gave the scales a red dye job. Red fading to orange, that gives it a really awesome and fierce looking flame kind of look. And this one here is the S35 VN blade steel. Yep, I did a blade swap, everyone. This is another awesome design by Vahit. My brother Vahit Dinkman of Bade Modern Designs. Once again, everyone, this is the Pocket Rhino. I love it. Now that we are going up a little bit in size, like I mentioned to you earlier, I will be showing to you guys the other Onis that I have. So these are the other two Onis that I have. Look, I really am quite a fan of the red fading to orange flame kind of color. I really love it. Uh, and I'm quite proud of this particular kind of red dye gradient. S35 VN steel here. I did a blade swap with the carbon fiber version and we've got the titanium version here that also features S35 VN steel and this one is a frame lock compared to the other two versions which are liner locks. Next of course, yes, I still have a couple of pilas. They are still very awesome knives but you know, I don't have them in stock form. This is carbon fiber. This is natural D10 that I've red dyed from uh, purple to kind of a light bluish green. Still love these clips man, never gonna let these go. These clips were made by Pops Custom Clips. Lockside has been stonewashed by myself as well. Now this next one is one that I'm super proud of. This is the Mini Bug Out and it's got my Sunset Red Dye job on the natural G10 scales that I got from Blade Scales. Oh snap, I hit the light. <laughs> Sorry guys. Well, performance anxiety on camera. There we go. So this is it. Action is still pretty good. Opening up with the thumb and the middle finger is not a problem and closing it. Yep, because I've already relooped this thing and I've not yet practiced with it much. So yep. Next is the Coke Tools KTC2. This one is the Urban EDC Supply Micata Handle Exclusive version. And I've red dyed the micata handles. They actually came in like, I don't even want to say dark green. It was supposed to be green micata, but it came out to be more like a dark shade of khaki. This was actually red dyed peacock green. And I actually like the way it looks now. It looks a bit more like forest green. Pretty awesome. But yes, I uh, haven't used it at all. Despite my initial intentions to buy it in the first place, it was because I wanted to put it to use. But I haven't carried it. It is an awesome pocket tool. Pry bar, bottle opener. Another one that I still have, surprisingly, in my collection, it is the CRKT folding razor. I still haven't let it go because I'm actually really proud of this <laughs> Anzo pattern that I put on the scales. One of the first times I actually did my own DIY Anzo pattern and I'm actually quite proud of it. And it's got this lock here that prevents you from activating the lock bar so this knife will not close on you. So that gives you an extra uh, sense of security an added layer of security, I should say. From that folding razor, I actually have this one. This is the stubby folding razor. And you know what? I think that this one is a fake. I had no idea that they would be selling knockoffs of this particular knife on eBay, but there are. Yeah, uh, I'm not too happy with this purchase because the action on this is not great. The detent is so weak. So, so weak. And it doesn't even lock up nicely. Like there's no, look at that. What kind of a lockup is that? Like that's like what, 2%? I don't know. But yes, uh, I have this in my collection because yeah, it serves as a reminder for me to always make sure that I get my sources right when I'm buying stuff. I really did not know that they actually had fakes of these and well, this might be a fake. I can't tell for real because it came in a CRKT box and everything. Now something more premium. This is the Primordial Mark 1 by Adam Purvis, A Purvis Blades. This was one of the first videos I made about a knife. I don't want to call it a review, but yes, it is the Primordial Mark 1, manufactured by Wii. But you guys have seen this one before, so moving on to the next one. And this here, my friends, is the Dam Designs Wraith. I got the blue G10 carbon fiber scale version. This is a beast of a knife. I think it's awesome, very well made. And that action, that whizzing sound, when it opens up, wow. Good job by brother Adrian D'Souza over at Damned Designs, Damned EDC. Won't be talking too much about this because I've actually made a dedicated video on this knife before. So let's move on to the next one, which of course would be another Damned Designs knife. This is the Yokai in the red marble carbon fiber. And the scales are a little bit different because I stonewashed these. So they have a slightly worn look. Initially, it was coated completely black. The blade profile, <laughs> harpoon style Tanto blade, it's good. <laughs> Perfect in my opinion, this is completely perfect. I've made a video about this as well, so you guys know already. Next up we have this bad boy here. This is the Gamma 
by Valence Knives. I actually have another knife on order from Valence Knives. It's called the Nocturne and that is, oh my goodness, chef's kiss. I would like to give it a chef's kiss now. Because I can't put my fingers to my lips because you can't see my lips, but yeah, <laughs> waiting for that. I've already got my down payment in, but yes, everyone, this is the Gamma. Still one of the best actions that I've ever experienced on a knife. This sound here, guys, this sound, you guys already know, that's a sound to die for. Once again. Oh my goodness. Yes, everyone. Ah. Next, I have a Wii Knives Zeta by Elijah Aisham. Don't think I've made a video on this knife, but I've told you guys that this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful knives ever made and designed. I should say ever designed and made, right? Yeah, manufactured by Wii, so the action is great. Lucky proud owner of one of these. This is number 17 out of 700, and you can see that it's marked right here. Next, another masterpiece by Vahid Dinkman over at Buddy Modern Designs. This one is actually manufactured by Tuya Knives. This is the Hive. The action is smooth as heck. I love it. Made a video about this thing, so you guys can go check that out. I won't be talking too much about this knife. And we move on to the Alliance Knives Slim Pickens. This is the one with the button lock. Yep. And the sound is a bit different because Alliance Knives actually reached out to me after watching my video on it and gave me some advice about how to kind of tweak this button lock so that you could kind of get a different sound and feel each time upon opening it and upon closing it. They announced that they will be making a mini-sized Slim Pickens and I want that so badly. That's going to be released maybe for pre-order in October and I'm really excited for that because I love this design. I love everything that they've done here on this platform and I can't wait to see what it looks like in a mini version because this one is honestly slightly large or slightly larger for my personal preferences although it is a very beautiful very wonderful knife i had to record in two parts so this is actually a second half of my recording session because i didn't realize that i took an hour and a half just talking about the knives so far my goodness let's carry on next is a pair of mectic v2s and these are made by scorpion six knives now you guys i think saw this one in the previous video. This is the one that finally arrived later last year. I really don't need two of these. <laughs> I just really splurged on these and um, I regret a little bit like to be honest with you. This one really is a luxury piece. This has like CTS XHP for the blade steel and we've got a zirconium show side with the orange peel finish that is flame black and then we've got titanium on the lock bar side which also has the orange peel finish and then we've got a Timascus clip <laughs> pure impulse buy this one like you guys already know this is super expensive the uh, more standard version I would say of the Mectic V2 has also arrived it's got a copper pivot collar which was an extra gift that Shane actually added in so thank you Shane the handles are made in titanium but yeah it's been textured uh, it's got a titanium pocket clip this one is number 43 the numbers in there I know I don't want to waste your time showing you guys but yeah that's 43 and this one here is number 17 and then we have the two Olamic Wayfarers this is the Wayfarer compact and this is the Wayfarer 247 I still really like the action on this one it's super snappy the detent is strong this one is still a little bit weak but it's been improved quite a bit because I actually sent it back to Olamic to get it fine-tuned and this is yet another case of me wondering do I actually need two of these looks like we're doing things in pairs now these knives are the Kaiser Sheepdogs this is the original full-size Sheepdog and this is the mini Sheepdog and I've got the uh, more premium one this is the S35 VN steel one because I like that cutout slots in the titanium scales and this one over here is the S35 VN version as well full titanium and uh, this is the original size I did however score myself one of the special versions that Kaiser actually had for their Kaiser Fridays or something like that and uh, well it's still in production I don't think it's been shipped out yet I think they have some delays so there are actually only 50 pieces made and I managed to snag myself one of those 50 this was actually in April and it is now at the end of July so I don't know what's going on but I think Kaiser has maintained pretty good communications with me on that so I'm not too worried but yes, these are my sheepdogs. Speaking of mini knives, this is the Stubby Mini Boker Quaken. Modified by the awesome MJL Bladeworks, Matt. Good job, man. I still have this. I think this is a super beautiful knife. The only downside, really, I think, after owning this knife is the fact that it lacks a pocket clip. And so this would kind of move around a lot in your pocket. And this knife, I made a video on this. This is the Fox Knives Radius. This is the Tools for Gents Limited version or i should say exclusive version this is 35 out of 50 so yeah it is limited i guess i didn't use it much so yeah i kind of lack practice on this thing 
not really opening and closing this like a pro. Which brings me to my one and only CKF knife. This is the CKF and Snacks Terra and I love it. I still love it. I really do. Yeah, yeah, I think you guys already know about this one. So, yep, not much to say here. Just that I really like it. And I love the way I modded it. <laughs> Since we are talking about snacks, of course, I have to mention that I have the Mini Buster produced by Wii. I am, however, hoping to get myself a Vision, a regular Vision. And I've put myself on Snacks' wait list for the Vision. This is... I just love it. I actually haven't carried this in quite some time. This is the Komodo by Northside Knives. And this one actually is manufactured by Wii, but it's got some custom work done by the awesome, awesome, awesome MJL Bladeworks. And yeah, um, let's see if I can still... Yeah, I still got a feel for this thing. One of the most unique knives in my collection. This is a pretty awesome pocket cleaver. And uh, yeah, very hefty, very chunky, just... Love the way it looks. Super menacing. Okay, this is my grail. You guys know this one is my grail. The Koenig Knives designed by TJ Schwartz. This is the Zaneda, the engineering marvel that is absolutely amazing. Beautiful, beautiful design. Very simplistic looking, but you need no tools to disassemble this thing and it is still in my collection. I really doubt I will let this go unless someone offers me a price that I cannot say no to. A couple of months ago, I actually posted a picture of this back up on my Instagram account and TJ Schwartz himself commented and said it's been a while since he saw one of these in the wild. Like, I mean, in terms of action, if you were to compare this to the standards of today, of course, this isn't going to be able to hold a candle, but there's no other knife with machining like this, you know? Look at that. Look at that lock bar itself. Look at the design there. Now, here is one of the custom knives that I own. This is the Grego Knives Achilles, and I haven't carried this in a while. Look at that action. You know, I've always mentioned to you guys that the benchmark for thumb studs is when you're able to just put your thumb on the thumb start and not behind it to flip it open and then you see the action there it just goes snap like that my goodness guys i was offered a very good price for this to have this taken off my hands but i declined because i mean i don't know i'm still so in love with this knife you know now when i talk about customs of course i cannot forget about this one this is the f1 custom by rip knives oh my goodness i forgot how to use this knife now there we go so yeah, put your finger on the thumb stud, not behind the thumb stud to actuate it. Let me just try that again. Haven't used this one in a while, so here we go. There! That action, guys. Oh my goodness. I actually use this quite a bit, so the pocket clip's a little bit scuffed up. I might have to send this back to him and ask him to kind of clean it up for me. And uh, re-stamp the logo. Yeah, guys, this logo is not etched. It is stamped. I don't think I'll ever let it go because this, like, really means a lot to me in terms of friendship as well as the journey that Danny Yard went through in order to get to this. Now we are done with three Pelican cases of knives. And so I decided to kind of switch things up a little bit and uh, show you guys a few knives that I actually have still kind of wrapped up in boxes, like almost NIB. And unsurprisingly, they are a pair of Spyderco knives. First one here, this is the leftover from the mod that I got Josh over at Razor Edge Knives to do. So this is a pair two scale with a pair three blade in there. And that is an S35VN blade. You guys can see like the blade ends there. So <laughs> yeah, uh, it is considered a new knife because I have not yet used it. If you guys know of anywhere I could procure like a pair two blade or a pair two re-blade, let me know. And if you guys know where I could get like, I guess, pair three scales, like the actual scales with all the hardware, please let me know because yeah, I, I don't mind getting that so I could have two actual working knives, right? And the next box that I have here is the DLT Trading Exclusive M390 Para 3 Lightweight. I actually have this one completely brand new. Um, Yeah, and I don't want to flick it open so I'll just slowly open it for you guys. Yep, there we go, M390. Never carried, only taken out of the box just to inspect it and also taken up one more time just to show it off to you guys but yes i mean it's even got the exclusive sticker still in that box but yeah the m390 lightweight version now finally we are moving on to the last box and there's not many knives in this box because it is one of those boxes where i actually maintain a small and very curated collection first off is the spiderco smock I don't know if I've actually showed it to you guys in this configuration with the Gradient Fade G10 scales here and the matching Gradient Fade G10 Combat Bead. This one is actually a birthday present from the wonderful Alicia. It's still got that scratch mark here and I'm not going to get rid of that. I cannot deny 
that action on the Spyderco Smock. I absolutely love it. This is one of my favorite knives of all time. It's always going to stay in my collection because this is super sentimental to me. And this knife is no stranger to you guys. My Spyderco Nirvana with a custom pocket clip here with my name on it. And I've stonewashed the scales. You guys know everything about this knife, even this beautiful, beautiful reground blade by Josh over at REK. Ah, this nightmare grind. It is just too beautiful. But yes, still in my collection. So this is my one and only working parrot tool. So it's got a blue, fade to green, natural G10 scale. This one is the PM2 Ultra with the button lock mod. Let me just do that again. There we go. Yeah, still got to practice it. It will not close the way I want it to. Ah, there we got it. My fear is that I will scuff up the scales beyond recognition and I won't be able to get replacement scales because these are custom made right with that slot over there. Now I did put a custom backspacer here. The people that actually made this ultra mod are blades we love. So make sure you go check them out. Now, last but not least, of course, I'm going to show you guys all my para threes. It has grown slightly. I mean, you guys already saw the para three lightweight earlier, but yeah, uh, here we go. Ta-da! These are my para threes, everyone. So far, I've got five para threes and I'm looking to get one more because you guys saw I have that blade but just no scales. These three here feature scales by Aramis and these two here feature scales made by Sharp Dress Knives. I really love Aramis's work. And when I say that I love it, I actually really mean it. And I actually have another pair of scales here, brand new that I just received in the mail. This one is made out of one of the newer materials that he has recently procured, made by Fat Carbon. These are the Dark Matter carbon fiber and this one is the green version really really beautiful just look at that look at how beautiful this is this is one of the knives that i always question myself do i actually need more than one of and uh, by looking at this collection i just cannot resist it and i will say yes i need more than one pair of three this is <laughs> this is really bad guys it's really really bad so the first one here, this one actually features an S30V blade. And this one here features an S110V blade. It is not my favorite blade steel, guys. I've put this through some hard use, you guys can see. That is my really crap sharpening skills. I really need to get myself one of those KME sharpeners where I could actually control the angle properly. This has actually had a broken tip before. So I chipped it and I don't like this particular blade steel so you're not trusting s110v anymore this over here has m390 for the blade steel all three para threes that feature the Aramis scales actually have matching lanyards and a matching lanyard bead now i'm going to have a problem because i don't think i have matching lanyard bead for that set of scales there these are best tech beads and actually have trip vials in them so it's actually pretty expensive on its own damn guys what am i blowing my money on what in the world okay moving on to the next pair of three here this is featuring the sharp dress knives copper shred carbon fiber or copper dust carbon fiber shred i don't know what this is called again but yep it's got the m390 blade steel on this one there are what seems to be a bit of blemishes here and there like there's a small little hairline crack right there that you guys can't really tell because this one actually has that kind of a slightly matte finish on it but if you really look at it you'll see the depth in it and that that's just really beautiful to look at and last but not least is this bad boy over here this one also features a sharp dress knives scale but this is a limited run of 24k gold foil carbon fiber shredded carbon fiber i should say it is in the skinny profile meaning to say that this has a belly but this one does not all the Aramis scales are all in the skinny style. This one does have a bit of blemishes, like there is clearly a crack right there. I think maybe this crack actually surfaced through shipping, so it is a bit unfortunate. This one has a more polished finish. In some areas, it's really, really clear, so you can actually see through this really nicely. I reserve this for a very special blade. This one is the Regrind by Josh over at REK Knives, S35VN blade. But this has been reground from a para 2 blade reverse tanto profile with a little bit of a switch and i gotta say that josh's work is always always astonishing by far my most premium para 3 yeah and with that guys this is the last knife in my collection i'm actually willing to part with most of the knives in my collection really it depends on the price but you know some of them i will not part with like these here i will not part with of course there are some that just are too sentimental to me 
to part with but if you guys see something and you're interested in it just reach out and if the price is right and if i'm actually willing to part with it then you know we could work something out i don't know how long the final video will be but i will do my best to keep it as short as possible i appreciate you sticking all the way throughout and sharing in this slice of my life looking at my knife collection dated July 2020. If you like the content that I'm putting out, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure that you hit the bell to be notified of any new uploads that I put out. Also, I run a Patreon page. I'll put a link up here to that in case you want to go check it out. And if you do become a patron of mine, thank you so much in advance. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you once again for watching and I will catch all of you in the next slice of my life. Until then, everyone, Gaga, Boos.